So I was playing around with my buttermilk biscuits technique, trying to make it more efficient and get better layering, and I stumbled onto this funny variation I'm calling fallover biscuits. First thing is get the oven real hot, 450 Fahrenheit, or 475 is what I'm doing, almost 250C. We need high heat to generate steam for puffiness. Super simple dough, start with a cup of all-purpose flour, 120 grams, into a bowl that should feel a little too big for the job. That will make cutting the butter in a lot easier later. A teaspoon of sugar just makes the flavor taste a little more alive and helps with browning. If I'm using unsalted butter, half a teaspoon of Morton Kosher is a good amount of salt for me. With salted butter, I would just add a tiny pinch. Baking powder, I do like a heaped teaspoon on that. Butter. Better butter tastes better in biscuits because there's lots of it proportionally. Two ounces, half a stick, almost 60 grams, very cold right out of the fridge. That's important. I don't know why I slept on pastry cutters for so long. These things cost like six bucks. It's as fast as the food processor if you include setup. It's tiny and it's way easier to clean. You could use a knife to chop the butter into the flour instead or press a fork into it, but this just does the best job and it does it quickly, which is important because if the butter melts, you end up with a tough homogenous mixture that will not be as flaky or crumbly. I think you want to cut the butter into chunks that are little but still clearly visible. Lots of butter in this recipe. For the non-US crowd, American biscuits are like scones, but they're softer and richer and flakier. At this point, it's virtually a pie crust recipe, but now we add a lot of moisture. U.S. style buttermilk, fermented milk. If you can't get this, I would mix yogurt with milk or water until you get viscosity like that. Measure out half a cup, 120 mils, and then I'm pouring in most of it, but keeping just a little bit behind for later. Mix that with a spoon, as much as the spoon can do. The dough should feel pretty wet. The moisture will give us the steam we need for lift. Time to flour my hand a little, scrape off what's left on the spoon, and knead that just just barely, just until it comes together into a ball. No more. Too much kneading and it'll be tough. Throw that on a cutting board. A big dusting of flour everywhere and then flatten it out into about half an inch or a centimeter. I used to use a rolling pin for this, but lately I've just been using my hands. The hands seem to do just as good a job and they actually give you more control. I want to shape this into as close to a rectangle as I reasonably can. And then the first fold. I got to be sure to count. Same deal again. Smash it down to half an inch, trying to keep it as rectangular as possible. I'm flipping it there to make sure that the side I'm about to fold over on itself is well floured. The dry flour between the layers is what gives you nice, clear, distinct layers in the final product. Nice, tidy rectangle. Top is well floured. Fold over. That's three folds. Keep going. The more we can keep this rectangular, the less trimming waste we'll have at the end. I'm going for zero waste because I'm only making enough for four small biscuits here. Biscuits are only really good when they're very fresh, so I see no point in making more than you can eat at a time. Just make as many as you and yours want with your morning brew that day, your coffee, and your newsletter, Morning Brew, the sponsor of this video. It's a free daily newsletter giving you the latest on business, finance, and tech. I've been reading it for like a year now, and in that time they've added a Sunday edition, which is very lovely. Some longer form items on Sunday, like this Q&A with Beeple, the artist whose NFT sold for $69 million. On weekdays, most of the items are usually shorter, a stock summary with a few lines explaining the numbers, then quick bullet point summary of important stories that are helpful for me to skim before I start my day. The writing is easily skimmed. It's funny and it's interesting. If you're into business, finance, and tech, there's no reason to not subscribe to Morning Brew. It's free and takes two seconds to sign up for. Do us both a favor and sign up via my link in the description. Thank you, Morning Brew. We are approaching the magic number of folds, which is seven. I am hardly the first person to observe that seven is perfect. You could do six, but I would not do eight because the number of layers doubles with each fold the difference between seven and eight folds is really big, and with eight folds, the layers are so numerous and thin that they cease to be perceivable as layers. Seven folds is the upper limit with this kind of dough. And for the seventh and final fold, I'm going to dip into that little bit of buttermilk I have left and paint that onto the surface. Because we don't mash this down very hard after the final fold, that middle seam has a tendency to not seal. The biscuit just splits in two as it puffs in the oven. The buttermilk will serve as glue. And then we don't smash that out very much. It should be an inch or a couple of centimeters tall. Nice, tidy rectangle. Back in the bowl and in the freezer to chill for like 10 minutes. If you chill the dough, it is so much easier to cut and you get much cleaner layers. You could use the traditional circular biscuit cutter, but that gets you a lot of trimming waste. Squares are much more efficient. And you could trim off a little on the sides if you want really clean edges that all show the layers, but I don't care that much. I am, however, going to cut this into triangles rather than squares. 
squares. I like triangles because they give you dry corners that contrast with the moist interior, and the narrowness of the triangle shape is essential to the fallover effect I'm gonna show you. A sawing motion with my knife gets me cleaner cuts. Chill your dough, gently saw it, and look, the layers are visible. We've not smashed them into each other and blurred the lines. And you could bake them just like that, or you could brush the tops with melted butter, or you could glaze the tops with that bit of buttermilk you have left. This gets you a kind of shiny effect. In those go to the very hot oven, I'm not using my convection fan. I find the fan gets the edges too brown before the inside can puff up all the way. Let them puff, let them puff, then five minutes in, there it goes. Too tall and narrow to stay upright. When this first happened to me, I regarded it as a mistake, but no longer. You'll see why. These took just 15 minutes total. You don't want to get the edges too brown. Any browner than that on biscuits tastes burned. If anything, I baked these a hair too long. So there's the top facing side. Nice clear laminations, pale gold color. Flip it around to the side it toppled over on, and over here you got deep golden croissant-like effect. Fall over biscuits, two tastes in one. The fact that they tumble a third of the way through baking ensures that the brown sides won't get too hot and burn. Love it. Look, the biscuits literally say, mmm. It's not a shape that's good for splitting and making a biscuit sandwich with. Do squares for that. But the way I like to eat biscuits is just pull them apart along their layers and summon forth the upside down bear. Good morning, sir. Thank you for donating your delicious brains to my biscuits.